Hey guys, Cliff Gray back with you. Today I interviewed Jake Lords. He's a well-known freshwater spear fisherman and he's got several world records in that world and he's the guy to talk about it. You gotta go check his Instagram out. It's Big Jake Lords. Beyond freshwater spear fishing, I just love the guy's approach to life. Every one of his posts on there makes me smile. So in this interview, we focus on that world, the world of freshwater spear fishing, but we also talk about some other topics. The main takeaway I want people, you know, my viewership to understand after listening to this interview is that it doesn't matter if, you know, you're a water guy or if you're a land-based hunter in the States, freshwater spearfishing is another opportunity that's accessible to anyone, really. You don't have to have a bunch of prerequisites. You can jump right into it and it's getting better. More bodies of water are opening up seasons for, for uh, freshwater spearfishing. It's a whole new frontier and there's a bunch of adventures and a bunch of opportunities. So let's dive right in. If you enjoy this content, do me a huge favor. Subscribe on whatever platform you consume it on. Spotify, Apple, YouTube, whatever works for you guys. Everything else is on my website, pursuitwithcliff.com. Go there and it's gonna be very apparent to you that I work my ass off just to not have a real job. All the hunts I guide, all the seminars I put on, all the unique experiences I offer and the membership site, all the details are there. I'll have some cool new merchandise, shirts, hats, all of that coming out soon in the next couple months. So get on there and subscribe to my email list. I'll put out the details there. But enough with that. Let's get to the episode. All right, Jake, I uh, I am infatuated with this freshwater spearfishing thing. I was actually, I just interviewed Tony, who who is a mutual friend of ours, and we were talking about it. And dude, my perception of freshwater spearfishing was that it was just like, it was a saltwater spearfisherman who got landlocked and he was just doing what he could do, right? That was my naive perception of it. And then, right. and then I met I met you at the Utah Expo, and I'm like, oh, this is a this is a thing. And uh, I'm crazy intrigued by it because I actually think that, in a way, as this grows, it gives like you know land based hunters another option, right? They don't have to be intimidated by the fact they got to go to the ocean to do spear fishing or whatever. So I'm infatuated with the whole idea, man. So just let the listeners and the viewers know like where where freshwater spear fishing's at, and uh, and we're gonna dive into a bunch of a bunch of the dive that you do, man. But yeah, give people okay. an idea of where it's at. Sweet. Um, so I'm actually based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, there's probably and it keeps on like as we work with like the you know DNR, we get more and more lakes opened up. But right now there's like probably like 16 to 18 lakes that you can spearfish in Utah. Okay. Um, and it just, it depends on the year, the temperature, the water. Um, I mean, right now, a lot of the water, just cause we've had a slow winter or a warmer winter, a lot of the lakes that we spearfish during the summertime never froze over. So you're basically spearfishing year round. Um, the water right now is probably anywhere from 35 to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, pretty cold, pretty cold water. Cold water. Uh, the fish are the, the fish definitely move a lot slower. Um, but yeah, I mean, species that we're typically targeting are walleye, um, all types of trout, um, crappie, bass small mouth, large mouth. Um, and then if, if you see a carp, we shoot it just to get it out of the, cause yeah, carp yeah, sure. not, yeah. They, they're considered, they're invasive in most of these places you're diving. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Right. And then there's, there's a couple of lakes that you, you know, you can go shoot like big lake trout or big, uh, Northern pike or tiger muskie, which is always fun. Yeah. And those are, those are all invasives too. Um, in some parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so, uh, this is actually a topic I want to talk about, Jake, the, the regulatory scene around spearfishing is, uh, around freshwater spearfishing is it, it's an issue, right? It's kind of one of the obstacles I assume to, to like the whole, the whole uh, sport growing. Um, right. when, when you say you open a lake in, or a lake gets opened in Utah, is it being opened for all species or is it limited? Like how, what does that it's look like? Super, super limited. Uh, 
like a lake in southern Utah got opened up for just smallmouth. And there's oh, okay. like there's largemouth and there's um rainbow trout in there. Yeah. So yeah, so you gotta be you gotta know the difference between what a largemouth and a small mouth look like underwater. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then that it's such an interesting uh deal, like the the regulatory deal. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it should be such a big obstacle, but I understand. I mean, it's, it's, I assume it's because it's, it, the, the rod and reel guys consider it conflictual. Is that basically the issue? hundred percent. I mean, it's like, I mean, how would I describe it? I mean, it's almost like, you know, comparing like in the hunting world, like, you know, somebody shooting with a rifle or with a bow. Yeah. You, you know, there's always going to be those like, you know, conflict of interest kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like, sure um yeah and like but at the end of the day like we're both we're both fishing just in a different way yeah it wouldn't so and you're, I, and you're abiding right. by you're abiding by the same limits right it's not right yeah right 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 yeah. and even in su in some states the limits are different than um catch like you know hook and line yeah so i i guess the obvious question man for somebody who's you know, never spearfished before, but they're, you know, they're in Nevada, they're in Utah, you know, any of these, you know, landlocked, landlocked places. Do you think that the opportunity, you know, to, to spear more species and more bodies of water, do you think it's going to increase, you know, over the next? Oh, I, I, I think it will just because a lot, like, as we work with like fish and game, like for instance, we had a, uh, we had freshwater worlds in Lake Powell this year. Yeah. And, um, the first day is game fish. So striper, walleye, catfish. And then second day is carp and it's, yeah. it, and it's, it's a slaughter fest. The, car like the carp day. Yeah. We're filling like two big dumpsters full of carp. Like I'm talking like like monster like 10 by 30 you know yeah. big dumpsters yeah uh but we're but then we're working with like local officials um and instead of just throwing them in the garbage we actually they actually dug a big hole um and turned it turned it turned the fish into fertilizer oh, okay nice um well you can do do you do you eat uh do you eat carp jake um, I mean, the, everybody says, you know, the best thing, you know, put, put the, the carp on the smoker. Yeah. Um, smoke it for about 17 hours on like a wood plank and then, and then throw the, throw the carp away and eat the wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got, I got you. And that's always been, I was just curious. I, I know there are yeah, people I, out. Right. I, I, I personally have eaten carp and it's, yeah. uh, it, it t like the process of like because it's such like it's a trash fish sure considered and like they literally eat trash um but i uh it was like such a like i had a brine it for 48 so hours much like, work. Let, yeah yeah oh it's so much work yeah yeah but i'm no, but I... i'm like i'm like if i'm gonna be shooting this fish like i gotta see if it like yeah tastes sure. good i get it man um and the other thing is, is I mean, back to your discuss the discussion of the Lake Powell deal, which, dude, first I want you, I want you to like explain to people how big a deal this is. Like, this isn't like three guys going oh, no, out. No, like, like, yeah, give give like, people like the the view of this thing. So I think this year we had like ninety plus divers come from all over the world. Yeah, I'm talking like 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 Ukraine, Russia. China, um, New Zealand, Australia, like these people are flying into sure. e either Salt Lake City or Vegas, driving into Lake Powell. And it's like, if you know Lake Powell, like the people that have never, and I, I for sure take it for granted, it's these big red rock walls Sure, that, you know, we dammed up the Colorado River. Um, and it's created, it's created Lake Powell, Yeah. but it's just like, you know, pretty blue water with these, like, no, no exaggeration, these big, like 300, 400 foot, you know, 
red rock walls um and we're spearfishing like on them yeah yeah sure it, it, i mean for a lot of people it'd be a topography that they have never seen it's right. like yeah right it, it's beautiful in that regard um so this thing's like a big a big scene this isn't like small beans deal so one question i have man is is the so one day is the game fish one day is the carp now right back, back to the regulatory thing is there a way that the freshwater spearfishing community actually kind of offers a service to like these bodies of wire water like you know you can like you I, i'm assuming they want you to have that day where you get rid of a bunch of carp is that the idea or my am, am i off right 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 so um yeah and and even like lake pal like the marinas work with us yeah um like you know they help us out with like housing um boat rentals um sure. yeah and then so we so we have a national tournament and then um a lot of people do like a regional tournament so they'll do like four or five tournaments in a season or like in a year um and then and then they'll have a national turn or a uh yeah a national tournament and the people that are like for like for like the u.s uh you know like first second and third typically you qualify to go to world so it's not like oh um, okay yeah so it's not like everybody's going like you have to qualify to be on like team usa i got so you. and it and it's like a point system so like and they do they do worlds um every other year okay and it's in, in worlds move the location moves around M moves all the time yep um we've done yeah beaver lake arkansas god i'd love to do a uh a world tournament in uh michigan oh okay i don't i don't, I don't know if you know uh john durdka i don't um his instagram is uh purely michigan okay um purely Michigan spearfishing, but it's, uh, oh, he gets so much, um, haters hating yeah, on him, you know? Yeah. Cause, cause there's a oh. huge, yeah. Huge rod and reel fishing community huge, up there. Huge rod and reel. And he, uh, he has some awesome videos of him shooting like big walleye. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they do not like that. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> but same goes for like, um, like when I shot the world record brook trout, like I, I was getting like hate DMs. Like, I can't yeah. believe you sh shot this beautiful fish. And I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> that's just, that's just a function of it, man. People view right. I, to, the thing that's interesting a little bit to me, Jake, is that I can totally see like the freshwater spearfishing guys, like getting a bunch of pressure because it's like a new thing. Right. So if you've been fishing, if you're a bass fisherman, in some lake and you've never, had to deal with a spear fisherman like now all of a sudden you feel like this pressure from the fact that there's guys doing it right 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 but, right but the on the flip side of this man i like in the ocean you have the same dynamic right like rod and reel guys and in, in, in spiros to some extent uh conflict right but right. there's a part of me that like i like i saw that you were spearing trout and i actually i think i think we discussed it like there's people who spear rainbow trout right and they're right a lot of they're stocked fish and so to me, I'm thinking like, this is a, a great situation because if, if there's more demand and there's more interest in the sport and, you know, and there's certain areas that are starting to get spearfished a lot for rainbow trout, like, can't they just stock more of them? Right, right, right. For I mean, sure. so it, it seems like it, it really shouldn't be that, it shouldn't be that conflictual, you know what I mean, right. in, in my mind. Like when you, when you get into the ocean stuff and you get, you know, I can see some of the issues where, you know, a lot of the reef fish you've got, you know, you got spear fishermen targeting specific reef fish and you know, that once they're gone, they're gone, you know, it's, right. Right. You know, you know, a little less, a little less renewable. So I can see there being more tension there, but the freshwater stuff, I feel like, I feel like if people really looked at it from a, you know, step back a little bit, I think there should be less conflict than there, than there is, man. Um, but, uh, one thing I want to dive into, man, cause I know we've probably piqued some people's interest that, that have never spearfished at all. H how does a guy get into it, man? Like, in, and I guess what, you know, while, while explaining that, how did you get into it, dude? Like, what's your origination story on this? 
Yeah, so I was uh, growing up in like Salt Lake City, Utah. Like I've always kind of been in like the Boy Scouts, been you know pretty active in like the outdoor scene. Like we've got the mountains, you know, sure. all these big lakes, fifteen twenty minutes away. Right. And uh, I was so I was on a I was on a work trip, um, actually in Lake Powell, and somebody brought a uh like a a pole spear like a three prong okay and like and growing up in utah i'm like what is that (laughs) and uh he's like this is a pole spear i'm like okay well what do you do with it um he's like you you grab the rubber pull it down release it and it'll kill a carp so he like showed me how to do it i kid you not i was in the water because like i just wanted the water i have like a deep passion for it yeah um and i'm in i was in the water for like three hours just killing carp (laughs) um and then so that was 13 years ago okay so and then you know fast forward um i lived in hawaii um got really into it you know i was diving out there with uh derek laval who really taught it he's uh kurt Kurt Chambers, old dive partner. I got you. But he uh, he basically taught me how to, you know, free dive and free dive safely. Right. Um, and he, I mean, his breath hold is like next level. I watched him at like 60 feet uh, shoot a uku, put it on his, put it on his belt stringer, load the gun and shoot another uku all in one breath. Yeah. And I just like, uh, I'm like sitting there looking at my watch and I'm like, uh, you're, you're five and a half minutes right there. And I, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was, so just like that kind of like opened up that world to me. Yeah. Um, and then I basically took, I took that, um, that skill set and brought it back to Utah and, and just started going hard. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, like I, I just more so, and like thinking back on it, like, su- like super new, like if I had the knowledge I have now, uh, I think I would progress faster. Sure. Uh, um, just because like, I mean, this is seven seven years ago when i shot or six years ago when i shot the world record smallmouth, yeah. water was like 41 degrees i'm in a three mil um <laughs> yeah it's 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 like middle of november it's snowing outside one homie's on the shore or t- you have two homies on the shore like just fishing yeah um and i'm like it starts snowing i'm like <laughs> all right i'm getting i'm i'm getting in get in shoot shoot the bass and like i still have like um i go and weigh it like on like a <laughs> i go <laughs> i go and weigh it on like a like one of those scales that you weigh food on oh, okay you know yeah, like yeah, they're sure. like they're like that big and yeah you know, like the little plate yeah the little plates or whatever yeah you set your food yeah. right right you shut your food on, like measure your food. So I had that as a scale. <laughs> I weigh it and I'm like, oh, this is uh it weighed like six and a half or it weighed six point nine pounds, so almost seven pounds. Yeah. Um I call my homie, I'm like, dude, I think I shot the state record smallmouth. Um, and he's like, Oh, how much did it weigh? I was like, I was like, om- almost seven pounds, or it's like six point nine pounds. He's like, homie, that's the world record. <laughs> and I like, I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking world record? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so in the freshwater scene, you have to for world records, it, they've got to weigh five pounds. Saltwater, it's got to be ten. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, so like, and you got to you got you, I mean, you you got to certify them. Oh yeah, like I. Yeah. The, I didn't have a certified, I didn't even know what a certified scale was. Yeah, I got you. So I'm like, I'm like, dude, what's a certified scale like to my homie? He's like, you got to go to like a post office that has a certified scale. Yeah. Bro, I, I'm showing up to this post office, flopping this fish right on the scale. And they're like, <laughs> you like the look on their face was just, oh, it's priceless. 
Um, so yeah, so I, I shot that, you know, and social media and like has been a huge blessing. Sure. Just because like, it's really been like the only way to contact companies. Oh, right. Um, you know, to either get sponsors or, you know, even just a relationship. Sure. So, so, so yeah, so I was sponsored by, um, Hatch Custom Spear Guns out of Wahoo, out of Oahu. So I was with him for three years and then, um, and now I'm with, uh, Spear America. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. But like, that was your first expo, like the, your oh, yeah. exposure in the world was when you shot the, that world record. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I'm shooting it with like a jbl lightning 22 that i got from a scuba store yeah yeah i got you <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 like the, so, the, the, the most inexpensive spear gun you can right, get right, yeah, yeah. Right, right exactly <laughs> that's awesome man so uh so you're you're i mean so basically man you got into it in a way of you got into it probably just because you intrinsically had the passion but what's the yeah. best what's the best route now like if a guy, I mean, if a guy in Utah came to you and they're like, Hey man, like this sounds awesome. How, how do I, oh, how do I get into uh, it? Um, I mean, truthfully, you could probably get like a, you could get a spear fishing setup for, you know, under a thousand bucks. Yeah. And then just so, start, go start going. Yeah. You just start going. It's one of those things where, I mean, it, it's like fishing you know, right. or hunt, hunting, you put in enough time, you're eventually going to get better and better and better. Um, yeah. and either cat, you know, just like fishing, you're going to catch bigger and more fish. Same thing with spear fishing. You're going to get better at holding your breath. You're going to get better at hunting underwater, um, knowing what environment like a fish is going to be in. Right. Yeah. You start to pick up on all that stuff just comes from reps, like right. You start you start to know things that you didn't even know that right. they, were, they were there to there to know. Yeah, I, right. I, I get I get that. Right, and then also like, it's not like back in the day where, you know, you, you have these, um, like hunting and spear fishing like blogs, right? Or, like like a like a Reddit, you know, where they go and like talk about sure. like spear fishing spots and like where to go. Yeah. Uh, so social media has been like a super, you know, super helpful with that. Right. We're, yeah, our, our, uh, social media is not, or NFSA, National Freshwater Spearfishing Association. Okay. Um, so that's like the Instagram. Is there, is there anywhere, or maybe you guys even have it, Jake, is there a, like a list of places that a guy can freshwater spearfish? Like, where would I figure yeah. out like the, like, how do I get through the legal component of it? Right. So, I mean, they're just going to be on like the, like, you know, on the DNR. Okay. So website. they, so if I go to Utah's DNR and I go to their fishing regs, there's, there's going to be, go it, ahead. It'll man. be a, it'll, it'll be a separate spearfishing regulations. Okay. And you go there and so, it tells yeah. it tells you the breakdown. It tells you like what lakes you can do. It'll tell you uh, um, like smallmouth and largemouth have a certain season. Like you can't, sh you know, shoot them when they're, you know, on their beds. Yeah. Like when they're, so yeah. So there's certain seasons for those. So they've gone through and, and all that, all that's available. What, uh, yeah. what are this? I mean, and you may not even know the answer to this, man, but what are the states where you would say like there's, there's freshwater spearfishing availability? Um, let's see. So you got Nebraska, Colorado's like pretty strict. There's only like okay. certain lakes, um, that you can shoot game fish. Um, most, I feel like most States you can, you can go and shoot like trash fish. Yeah. Like, yeah. In vases you know, or carp or whatever. Right, 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 right. So, um, Nevada's, Nevada's pretty good. So you got like Lake Mead and then, you know, below the dam, Willow. And then, uh, so yeah, so Wyoming, Nebraska, Colorado, South Dakota, New Mexico, Arizona, um, 
parts of Wisconsin, parts of Michigan, uh, Arkansas, Oklahoma. So it's not it's not super limited. Like there's opportunity no, no. in a lot of places. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, Arkansas is like it's so fun. Go oh, is it, like, is the water warm down there? Is the fresh water warm? It's warm and like certain times of year you're gonna get, you know, fifteen to twenty foot biz. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was actually funny. This last summer, uh, my dive partner Brett Leable met me. I was working out there, so he, he drove his boat up and stayed out there with his family. And he's like, "Dude, I just want to get a paddlefish. Yeah, just want to get a pa- paddlefish. Have you ever seen a paddlefish? Yeah, 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 sure. I mean, I've They're... not seen one in real life, but I've seen them on Instagram and stuff. <laughs> right, they, they arc with like a big bill. Yeah, like it has the same like material as or same uh, skin okay. as like a shark. Yeah, so I got you. Yeah, so we're diving, and I'm like, um. He's, he like pops his head out. He's like, dude, I just shot a paddlefish. I'm like, get out of here, bro. Yeah. I, he's he's like, dude, I swear. I was like, <laughs> no way. I get back in the boat um, or I get, get in the water, grab my camera. And I kid you not, dude, this thing was as big as him. <laughs> like, like, I think it weighed, it weighed like 88 pounds. So Jeez. it was like, it was, it was three pounds off from the world record. The, but like, the, the world record, the 90, spearfishing world record? Yeah, 92 pounds is the spearfishing world record. Oh, okay. So obviously so yeah, guys, so guys, guys have been spearing for them for a while. Yeah, but they're just like, they're so hard to find and like so elusive. Yeah. Like this this one was like just swimming by at 30 feet while he was coming up and he saw it. He's just like, plop. Yeah, had, had a little luck on his side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes that that helps, man. So, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of different, uh, places you can go. That's, that's interesting, man. What I tell me if I'm wrong, Jake, to me, one of the big obstacles that I would view on this deal is the cold, which I think is actually has its own interesting dynamic right now. Cause there's this like, I mean, dude, I can't go through Instagram and not see people sitting in cold water. Like every other post is about being in cold water. So it's like, kinda, cold, like, like cold plunging. Yeah. 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 Cold plunging. I see you do it. I see a lot of people doing it. So right. there's like part of it. Part of this is like, to me, you know, because I've done a lot of spearing in the ocean where it's warm in the Caribbean, you know, like, you know, you, you had to, be, you have to be a total weenie to really get cold down here. But a lot of the freshwater, like the temperatures you're talking about, man, are cold. But right. and so I'm like, that's a deterrent for most people. But then I'm like, well, this is like the clash of two worlds, right? Because if you want a cold plunge, you know, why don't why don't you instead just go spearfishing in fresh water? You know what I mean? It's so true. Like, uh, so I, I mean, I obviously was cold, or I was spearfishing in cold water before I was cold plunging. Yeah. But kind of looking back, I, uh, oh, and like I went through like all the you know, trials of like what gear is used or, or, you know, what gear. Yeah. Works and doesn't work. Works and doesn't work. I mean, the, cause the biggest thing with like spearfishing in cold water is, um, keeping your hands and your feet warm. Sure. You know, the, the, the wetsuit, you know, whether, and I, everybody's different. I run warm. So like anywhere from like 30, 34 to 42 degrees i'm wearing a five mil yeah and m- most people be wearing a seven mil seven or even like yeah even yeah. like an eight mil yeah so um but the biggest thing is yeah so for my for my socks or for my booties i, I actually do i put merino wool socks underneath oh, okay uh, and then i do like a a three and a half mil booty um just so you Cause once you start getting into like the thick stuff, um, you know, like a five mil glove, you lose, you lose that mobility. Yeah, sure. You know, just like shooting a spear gun and grabbing the fish. Like it feels like, you know, marshmallows on your hand and yeah. you like, can't, um, so yeah, I... the, the best glove that I have found, um, is actually a duck hunting glove. Oh, okay. Um, company called Glacier Glove. It's a waterproof glove like to an extent, but it's fleece on the inside. Ah, okay. So, um, 
it's yeah and and you can buy those gloves like at sportsman's or cabela's yeah inexpensive um, yeah 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 so yeah yeah well that's the thing is dude you're like a i mean i'm sure it's not just you but in in my mind it's for sure you you you're like a you're like a pioneer in this right like all the gear and stuff is not <laughs> established right like everybody right knows, right you, know, you can go google you know bino harnesses for elk hunting and there's 80 guys like me doing reviews on them right like there's like so much right. information out there on this kind of thing right. you've got to go to like the source to get any you know good good information and it's uh i mean there's guys have been you know i i used to dive i mean now it's been a long time man like i don't know how long abalone in like northern california has been closed but i i used right. to dive for that and that would have been i'm trying to age of myself but it would have been when i was in my early 20s i mean it's like damn near 20 years ago and right. what what you said man diving in that that you know northern california and it's not near as cold as what you're talking about but you know like i can't remember exactly but i think 50 55 degrees or something and i was always right. i was always wearing a seven mil wetsuit and you all and then you gotta you know wear a lot more weight but the big thing that i always notice is exactly what you're talking about the mobility of your hands, like everything's so much harder to do, man. Like even right. equal, equalizing can be hard. You can fit your glove, sure. you know, in there. Um, everything is harder. And you know, even though I have a fair amount of diving experience, Jake, I like for me, equalizing, you know, diving deeper, all of that stuff is very dependent on how relaxed I am. And man, cold, cold would be a challenge for me. You know what I mean? I, like it's, it's. Right. Be, because I'd have to get used to that. So I think for me personally, um, that's for sure like an obstacle, but it's, it's fun. You know, it's just a, a challenge of it, you, you know? Right. Right. I mean, the, the most challenging, the most challenging thing in like 35 degree water is the first 20 minutes. Just powering and through. Not even powering through, but because I mean, there's a difference in cold plunging in 35 water. There's a difference when your face is in yeah. 35 degree yeah, water. Yeah. So like the first, I kid you not for the first 20 minutes. And even though I like, I've, you've got a five mil hood on for the first 20 minutes, you have a brain freeze. And oh, it's like, yeah. you, you have to fight past that mental barrier of yeah. like, it's going to go away eventually. And it does. Yeah. But it, uh, it, yeah, that, that sucks yeah it's like it just yeah it is what it is you got to deal with it dude that that brings me to like a general thought jake and i want to hear your perspective on it the more and more i get into spear fishing i realize that there's a lot of things that have become really popular in terms of like mental toughness you know physiological things that people are doing to feel better during their day you know all these right. different things right breathing techniques cold plunges um you know, breath hold stuff, all of this stuff. It, it's crazy because when you look at, I see all these trends and I'm like, oh, dude, free divers have been doing that for like 50 years. Spearfish right, have been doing right. that for 50 years. Like, oh, your mental toughness thing, you know, spear fishermen have been doing that for a hundred years. And it's, it's really, it's really interesting to me how many things there are that free diving and, and uh, spear fishing encompass on that front particularly the the mental dude the mental toughness thing i mental toughness is not probably the right word jake but uh i think somebody's ability to to assume they can do this and then over over time practice and pushing through they can do like this actually is right. more apparent in spear fishing than any other anything else i've done in my in my life like and, and the thing is is it's it's really what's amazing to me is it's not a physical thing right like i don't have to be you know i mean i know guys that go that hunt you know they hunt at 120 feet and they're you know they're 65 year 65 year old right. guys and they're oh yeah you know, they, they could be overweight they could be skinny little you know you know non-muscular guys like me or whatever but what they've achieved mentally is in my view, so much more impressive than like, you know, some physical specimen climbing a mountain because it's 100%. all mental, dude. It's really wild. Right, right, right. It, it's funny you say that. Like, um, 
like even cold plunging, like you'll get these people that are like, cause we've got like a pretty big community out here in Utah. Sure. Um, and like the quote that I, uh, I listened to this, uh, to the book, uh, lone survivor. Yeah. Um, 15 years ago. And the quote that stood out to me, and it's kind of like, I've kind of like not lived by it, but I think about it every time I'm doing something hard is the body can take damn near anything. It's the mind that needs the training. Sure. So it's like, I'm like, it just kind of shows, you know, kind of what you were saying, the, you know, the ability of how powerful our mind is. um, And, you know, the positive thinking, the energy that we have, you yeah. know, in, in, our, in our minds, you know, you tell your mind that you can do it and it's already done in your head. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. It, it sounds so for me, at least Jake, it sounds so woo woo and abstract for, for oh. out, out, but outside of <laughs> the diet, sure. you know, outside of the diving oh, world, yeah. in the diving world, it's like, everybody knows that that's a real thing, right? Like, right. you know, me, me and you can hold, I mean, me and you can, you know, it, or you take somebody who's never done like apnea stuff or whatever, and they're going to hold their breath right. for 40 seconds and feel like their head's going to explode, right? In, right. In two days, they can hold their breath for four minutes. Right. And that's like, it's crazy, right? Like I, you can't take a guy, you know, if, if, if I can only deadlift 200 pounds, in two days, I can only deadlift 205 pounds. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> like, right, <laughs> like, right. It's just it's what it is. But the right. ment- you know, the how much you can progress mentally in this world is it's wild, dude. And uh, right. well, and I even I even tell people that like, you know, when you're when you're hunting at like 50, 60 feet, like, I mean, there's a difference between free diving and spear fishing. Right. Um, you know, I mean, when you're line diving compared to like having a gun out, oh, you're like hunting, like, you yeah, know, yeah. getting into like the rocks and stuff. Um, it's, a, it's such a different mindset. Oh yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Well, the other, the other thing, uh, Jake, uh, I, I don't mean to, I don't want to change subjects on you, but I think it's really apparent, man, within my world of hunters. I don't, I mean, I've been in that world my whole life, but spear fishing, it has a next level component of hunting because, and I can't describe why Jake, but I, 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 I can, go ahead. I can tell you why yeah, go you ahead. shoot a fish, you shoot a fish in the ocean. Then you have homie freaking tax man trying to steal your, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying, yeah, trying yeah. to, trying to steal your fish and if he's not stealing your fish he's trying to eat your leg yeah. you know <laughs> well yeah and there's that component and then and then well whenever i'm like fighting a fish in the ocean or whatever a lot of times right. there's there's moments where yeah you're like looking down to see if there's sharks coming or whatever and then it <laughs> right. strikes you that like oh yeah i can't i can't breathe down here you know you got you know so there's all right. these these, right. these different right. components but i also think dude the actual hunting <laughs> the hunting part of it jake like the the how much your vibe affects fish is crazy. You know what I mean? Like when you're like, I I went lobster diving with my daughter uh, this morning. And of course, all I had was a pole spear with me. And we got into some big, uh, like we call them yellow jacks on the reef down here, like big ones. And I was like, and they were all over me, man. Like I had a, I had like a lionfish pole spear, like, you know, the, just so people that are listening, like I, this thing's right. got a, a like, range. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I gotta be, I gotta be six inches from the fish. Right. And even then, right. like, it's, I could have to grab the fish immediately, but the fish, they, they like, they knew that, you know what I mean? And because my mindset was I'm around them and my mindset is like, well, I can't kill one. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like you know, I don't, I, I don't, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to kill one because I'm not equipped right now or whatever. We're lobster diving those same fish, man. If I was like, I'm going to kill one. Boom. They're gone. Right. You got a big gun. You have a big spear gun in your hand. They know. Yeah. 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 They know. And I, I think, I think it's, (coughs) they, they pick up on your man. They pick up on like a vibe or your mannerisms, eye contact or whatever. That's unlike land-based stuff. Right. Well, I mean, it's, 
it's like uh i mean it's like you go find a big deer and it's like in the city limits yeah you know like that 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 deer knows that it's not getting killed yeah 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 no for for sure man um i do gotta ask you because i'm totally naive on this when you're diving for walleye and in these uh other they're like you know predatory fish do you guys yeah. use any um any similar tactics than that the the ocean guys do? You flashers, any of that stuff? Uh, yeah. So it, it, it's worked for striper. Okay. Um, and then also like the big lake trout that we shoot. Uh, we'll, we'll use like actual throw flashers or crack pipes. Okay. And uh, and the yeah the the from what I I mean I I've, I've had. Um, there's a company called the uh, Mutiny Dive Co, and okay. they make the best the best throw flasher. It's like it's built like this, and it like literally spins oh, like okay. going down. Such a sick throw flasher puts puts out a but, bunch of sparkle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and then we'll we'll use hang flashers too, like off of a float. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and so freshwater fish will will be curious to those also oh bass go nuts for them oh really they'll come up to them yeah oh yeah 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 and and i assume just legally chum well i don't even know if it would work but chumming is not a thing in freshwater no. yeah yeah no. yeah um and uh <clears throat> yeah that's super that's super interesting man that like it's kind of like the same the the you know or you can use the same same tactics on them what what other right. different what i mean i know you've done ocean uh spear fishing too quite a bit jake like what are the other big differences like a guy like me if i go you know do freshwater stuff expectation wise like what's the difference uh you're not gonna have as long as breath holds because the cold cold and elevation oh, okay yeah. um and it, it, like you're not going to see nearly as many fish as you would the ocean just less density yeah yeah yep so i mean i feel like the, yeah those are probably the and then also like the the gun that you're going to be using like i mean in the ocean what do you what do you use in like a 120 130 centimeter yeah yeah i mean on reef on reef and stuff i use i mean i use a 90 a lot on reefs like a right. 90 110 something like that and then on blue right. water so, yeah, i use like a 150 so like some freshwater, like I'll use like a 60 centimeter tiny. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So like super close range, double, you know, double wrap. Yeah. Um, And then like, yeah, when it, when it's like super clear, I'll use like anywhere from like a 90 to 110 centimeter. Yeah. Um, Just traditional Um, or, or I really like a, like a 75 single roller with a kicker oh, okay um for competition i i i love just a traditional just because like if you're if you're diving with like a roller and something broke yeah you're yeah. kind of screwed yeah so yeah, yeah with traditional you could you could fix things quick yeah you know it's it's interesting man um down here in the caribbean jake you you still don't see that many guys diving with rollers you know what I mean? Um, what What is that? Is, is what is that? Uh, I and this is just my perception. It could just be totally biased off social media. But when I see guys, particularly in Hawaii, it seems a lot of them are using rollers. They're. Uh, I think that's just like kind of the region kind of stuff. Yeah, just cultural stuff. Some guys there mm -hmm. using them. They starting. They're starting to be more popular or, or whatever. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I, I've shot one a few times. I've, I've never consistently, consistently. Used right. It. Right. I mean, th there, there definitely like, there's a lot like a, if you get like a one thirty double roller. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's basically like shooting a 160. Yeah. Like a tuna gun almost. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep. Less kick. Yeah. Yeah. All that, all that stuff. And it's, I mean, I can see from a technology standpoint when I read about them or watch videos, like they make they make sense. But uh, I think it's just the cultural cultural. I mean, it's it's gear like gear right. doesn't like the culture around gear in hunting, fishing, whatever. It's super <coughs> it's super interesting. I mean, I like there's boats For sure. there's boats in the Caribbean that if you showed up with a roller, guys would be like, 
dude, hey, you bring a real gun? You know what I mean? Like, or do you, you right. know, do you bring not a, right. not a real, like in this, like a, right, 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 right. You, you know? Um, so right. it's just kind of, it's, it's just funny how that kind of stuff develops, you know? Um, right. And, and changes, changes over I time. Mean, I mean, the same thing is like, like a pole spear. Yeah. Um, like the difference between like a, using a pole spear on like small fish in Hawaii compared to a fish in the Bahamas. Yeah. Um, is like night and day difference. Like I, I, I took like, uh, like a skinnier pole spear to the Bahamas that I would, that I was using in sure. Hawaii. Yeah. First fish first, I kid you not. The first fish I shot like there was decent size was a midnight parrot fish. Yeah. It rocked up. It rocked up on me and snapped the pole spear. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, these fish are like, yeah, different. Yeah. So, deal. yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, um, so out there like, Oh, have you done the Baham Bahamas? Is so I have, yeah, I haven't done the Bahamas yet. I've been, I mean, I've been, you, I mean, I've been I mean you, you, you live in Puerto Rico, so you get it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 yeah, I'd like to go. I, to be honest, Jake, I haven't done a whole lot of pole spearing. Um, you know, it, other it, like incidental right. stuff, you know. Right. If you took a, like, if you took a spear gun to the Bahamas, it would be game over. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, uh, yeah. So yeah. Just so, pe pe just so people understand what uh, Jake's talking about in the, in the Bahamas, it's illegal to shoot, to shoot spear guns. You have to shoot pole spears which from a technology standpoint, really just limited, much more limited range. Right, Jake? Right, right. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, no, I, uh, I, uh, I hear you, man. It's the, the whole, yeah, all the culture around gear, it doesn't matter what sport you're in is, is kind of, kind of hilarious, but dude, it's funny though. Cause, I mean, you mentioned around your world record record deal. I always try to find the somebody who, I really look up to in whatever sport and right. like it's it's weird because i know that there's probably a lot of people listening to this and they're like they're anti you know in you know insta hunter insta spear fisherman anti you know kind of the commercialization of these sports but dude right. that's that's how i i mean i'll go if i'm gonna like if i'm interested in learning how to wahoo spearfish in the caribbean i'm gonna find the guy who on his Instagram, he's got right, right. he's got ninety straight posts of big wahoo, and then I'm gonna literally zoom in on his gun if it's not apparent, and I'm just gonna buy that. Right, right. I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, it, like that, yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, like let let the guy do it who's or you know depend on the guy who is uh, who's already figured he's already, out. He's already drugs. he's already fi figured out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Jake, dude, last thought is uh, when when somebody in the states gonna figure out a way to uh, get more people into this freshwater stuff, man? Who's gonna Who's gonna create like a freshwater spearfishing class or something like that? Um, I mean, so we actually do. Oh, do you? Uh, I mean, out, out here in Utah, like we'll do, um, like meetups. Yeah. Um, where like bring your kids you know, and we'll bring all of our gear that we have. I mean, I've got 10 wetsuits. Yeah. You know, so like, um, you know, we'll do like meetups and be like, Hey, come try spearfishing. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. And we, we've actually created tournaments like online tournaments for, um, for like anybody under 18. So like, you know, a, a kid. Oh, okay. Um, so that way it gets them more involved in the spearfishing community because they're realistically thinking like they're the future. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, well, that, I mean, that makes sense. Right, so. And so, every, yeah, so like, like, a, like everybody's welcome to those, Jake, like a guy who's never dove before. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yep. cool, cool. Yeah, so, so we do, we, we also have a pretty good um, community on Facebook, just Utah Spiros. Oh, okay. Um, they can go on there and like, you know, guys are on there selling gear, um, you know, telling, Hey, I went diving at this lake. This was 15 feet. Water temperature was, you know, 45 degrees. So. Yeah. Yeah. So a good, there's a good, like, uh, um, source information there for people. 
Well, dude, right? I think and, that I think that stuff and, will keep growing. And, and just like you said, like if you're if you're looking to get into spear fishing, like you're going to go on Instagram or YouTube or TikTok or you know any social media platform, and you're gonna you're you're either going to look at what the homie is using and the gear and where he's going, or you're just going to like. I have people DM me all the time um, and they're like, Hey, I'm going to be spearfishing in Utah. What's the best gear I should use? Where do I go? And like, most of the time I'll tell you like some good spots. I'm not going to tell you my spots. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, I mean like when people are like, Oh, like wh where'd you shoot that fish? I was like in the water. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they're, like, yeah. they're like, no, no. Like where? And I was like, I actually <laughs> shot him. I shot this one in the head. <laughs> and they're like uh yeah like you're not gonna give away yeah, your, you're not no, gonna give away no, your honey holes no. honestly but right. uh but what's interesting is i i do think jake like where spear fishing is particularly freshwater spear fishing for what i've seen there's a lot of people like you who want to see the sport grow right for sure so for sure i mean dude there's a lot i mean i would say like in the elk hunting world the majority of the people who are ingrained in it really don't want to see it grow it's it's like right. so competitive like there's a there's a lot of like so much tension around opportunity i don't feel that i don't feel that with spearfishing in general as much but particularly freshwater spearfishing it, to be honest right. it's, it's kind of it's kind of refreshing and i think i think because it's kind of new to yeah an, you know to, to an extent like um where like fishing has been around forever and yeah you can go to Cabela's and buy a, you know, $40 setup to go fishing where like spear fishing, you're like, Oh, like it, it, it's like, Oh, I got to hold my breath and shoot this fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think like the unknowing, right. Uh, is the, is the biggest factor of, of spear fishing. Right. So. Well, dude, but that's, I mean, I'm biased, Jake, but that's what makes that's what makes it cool, man. Like there, there's right. a, there's like a little, it's so weird, dude, because it, it's just a mental, it's just a mental barrier. You know what For I mean? Sure. It's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like I mean anybody could do it. There's a, you know, there's just this mental barrier that people. It's just like a weird new thing. But I also feel like once you're in, you're like into something kind of special. Right. Right. Well, and. I guess my, my mindset kind of changed in the last year and a half. Um, I'm in, I'm in a men's group called we're the day and, you know, the society kind of, they're like, Oh, it, they put us like a mental block on our, on our minds where, Oh, like what, what if we can't do it? You know, or where, you know, the last year and a half, I'm like, well, what if we can, like, that's, that's yeah, how yeah. I think now. That's how I think now. Right. Um, or like, you know, what do you have to lose? You know, what do you have to gain? Right. You know, nothing to, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I like, think spirit fish I mean, is perfect analogy, what's, man. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Well, dude, let's break that down, Jake. Like, a guy wants to go freshwater spearfishing. The worst thing he does is he goes out, floats in the water, you know, exposes himself to something like totally wild can't get down and equalize so he has to come back right. and he has to come back another day that's the right. worst that's the worst thing. that's the that's that's the worst yeah but like i'm like i might like, but the fact like you got out there and like you put yourself out there you did it yeah yeah sure yeah and then the and then the on the upside is he can see like a totally new universe that do like uh Less than one I mean, percent of people are exposed to. Oh, for sure. You know, um, yeah. And uh, and also, like, I think there's so much like, there's so much concrete. There's so much concreteness to the mental progression that I don't. I just don't think is in other. I don't. I don't think it's in a lot. Very many other endeavors. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So, I uh, I love it, dude. Right. I, I, I mean. Even even just the environment of being underwater is so intriguing. Like I'll I'll, I'll even just go and take a camera um, and take it underwater just so I can see how fish react. Yeah, sure.
like yeah i mean i'll i'll, I'll go shoot uh, like like with the camera um like fly fishermen that are you know i mean and they're like so confused they're like dude you're in a full wetsuit like fins and i've got like a, i've got like this camera yeah and i was like dude just i just i, I was like dude i just want to see how the these fish are reacting to yeah, like yeah. your flies and yeah. they're just like so oh it's dude. i mean i've actually i've been spear i've been spear fishing where guys are like um ice fishing yeah. and i'm like oh i still remember this to this day these guys are like ice fishing in the part where I was at, like wasn't frozen. I go down. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm like, Hey, have you guys uh, caught anything or seen anything? They're like, no, we've been here for like two hours. And you know, I go down, there's a brown trout that's like huge, like 20. <laughs> it was like, I think it was like 20, like 23 inches long. I freaking plop that thing, come up, and I'm like holding the fish. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Like, they're like, what? <laughs> well, dude, and this is not a knock on rod and real fishermen, but I do like a lot of the reefs that I've dove here, Jake. I and it, so I I I rod and real fish actually off the shore with my little boy a lot because he enjoys right. it. And so right. we do that a lot. I I'll try to do this without sounding like an egomaniac. But I can outfish all the local guys off the shore on these reefs because I've dove those reefs. You know right. what I mean? You, you know the structure. Yeah, you know exactly. You know the structure, and you also know, like, hey, I've dove this on an incoming tide, an out tide, a slack tide, and I know exactly where the snappers go. You know what I mean? Right. right and these right. are, I mean, these are guys that have been fishing this that are now fifty years old, and and they started when they were five years old you know like local right. local dudes and right they just if you're not under there dude you don't the information that you get is like is crazy like it's it's right. yeah i mean you know so i mean i'm sure you see that with fly fishermen and, and stuff like that too oh but, it it's classic yeah when i'm like yeah like i'll go to the green river just and just film right uh and i'll be like dude there's a 24 inch rainbow right here it's hungry and and they'll be like they'll get like excited they're like uh are is it is it i'm like it's sitting here with its mouth open going upstream it's hungry like <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah i i know i know how these fish react like yeah 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 well in gear too man like uh particularly leader size on reefs like like i've right. seen you know you you if you see fishing line in the water one time, you like the any sort of thought of mythology around leader mattering visually goes away. Like you know, oh yeah, like you know, depending on the visibility, depending on whatever, you know, what leader that rod and reel guy's using is huge because I can see it with my eyes and I'm not a fish. You know what I mean? Right. So just right. little stuff like that, it's you you pick up on it. It's kind of kind of kind of interesting or or other things too jake like like i i've fished a lot out of boats in my life and had people tell me you know had like rod and reel guys be like oh yeah well you, you know you 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 we got to start we got to start chumming we got to let everything settle down once we've stopped because you know we, when we pull up like we probably scare the fish away and that's like right that's the exact opposite of what i've seen i mean oh, I've, I've jumped no. in the water oh, you know yeah hundred percent like they're like what are you doing you're gonna scare the fish i'm like dude they're all around me right now yeah like we gotta like, get they're, them yeah. they're, they're they're coming up and hit, hitting me in my mask like yeah we're okay yeah 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 exactly like there's all these things that you know you're seeing reality when you're down there whereas above you know above the water you're just speculating you know right um, right but uh dude i i uh really enjoy talking to you jake i appreciate you taking the time yeah man. Let let yeah, people know. Uh, let people know where they can follow you. I love your Instagram, man. There's like yeah. the positivity there is just, dude. You're like you're a pro at bringing positivity to Instagram, but in a way that's not like shitty fake. You know, I I right. love it, dude. Right. It, like I all, all, the way that. I would describe it, it's just like when you pop up with a new post, it doesn't matter what it's about, dude. It makes me it makes me smile. So, anyways, tell people where they can follow you, man. Yeah, Instagram is uh, Big Jake Lords. Um, God, I, I need to be like you, and I need to I need to start YouTube and more, and you yeah, know, get more active, 
getting more active in that, but mostly, mostly Instagram, Facebook, just Jake Lords. Yeah. Um, yeah. Send me a DM and 90% of the time I'm, I'll get back to you. Good deal, dude. Thanks Jake. I appreciate so, it, man. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks dude.